The Lord is helping us to overcome. Amen. And even though the times are difficult, the Lord's strength is upon us. And so we keep going. We cannot live in fear. We cannot crawl somewhere in a rock and hide. But we have to use the wisdom that God gives us and the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to obey the Great Commission. And so I'm happy to be here in Kenya again. I have uh, visited this country 20 times now. And I'm getting older just like you. But we have a great mission ahead of us. Because we serve a risen Savior. And each one of us who believe are looking forward to our resurrection. And we know the nations are suffering today. We've been through an extraordinary period of difficulty. I remember at the beginning of 2020. I was still traveling uh, up to February. And I had been to Brazil and Myanmar in February. But suddenly this pestilence began to spread among the nations. And it isn't something that is isolated to a region of the world. But it is a worldwide pestilence. And I've never had to live through anything like this in my life. And we know that Christians are also getting sick. And Christians are also dying from the virus. And some of the people who have been confessing the protection of God have died from the virus. So I'm here as your brother. And you see my skin is different, but that's all. Because we are all the same. We need Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to continue working while we can. It was difficult for me to stay home most of 2020. Because I go somewhere almost every month. Preaching the word of God. And serving my brothers and sisters who need help. And when we had to stay home, we had no choice. We began hearing the testimonies from our, our brothers and sisters overseas. We began to hear that they were suffering, even not having enough food to eat. And it was a, a lot different in the USA as well. But we have a, a great abundance there. And we had to suffer just a little bit. But the, the people that we loved around the world were suffering a lot. And so the projects were kind of put on hold for a while. And I couldn't visit the people. But the Lord helped me to see that the need was great. 
Lakini Mungu akanisaidia kuona kwamba hitaji lilikuwa kubwa sana. And so I said to the Lord, what can we do? Nikamuuliza Mungu tufanyeje? And we decided to raise funds to provide emergency food for many people. Tukawa tunachakisha hela za kuweza kuwasaidia watu wanaokosa chakula. Our ministry doesn't have a lot of money especially for that. Tuma yetu haina pesa nyingi za za kufanya kazi kama hizo. But I began to share the need with the people that I know. Lakini kaza kushirikilo itaji kwa watu ambao ni na wajuu. And they started to give. Na wakaanza kutoa. And we were able to raise a lot of money from the United States. So I work in about 10 different nations. I go there and I preach and teach the word. And I help them to have clean water to drink. And I help to empower them so they can earn some extra money for their family. And it was difficult for these brothers and sisters around the world even to go out to minister to the people. Because the governments would say, you can't gather for your meeting. Kwa sababu mataifa viongozi walisema kwamba hatuwezi tukakusanyika pamoja kwa mikutano. Did that happen in Kenya? Je, inafanyika hiyo hapa Kenya? It's the same everywhere. Ilikuwa hivyo kila mahali. Except most governments have a tighter fist than the United States. Lakini kuna mataifa mengine ambao wako na hali ya kulazimisha kule Marekani. And suddenly many many of our friends found that they they couldn't even go to work. Na wengine wakajikuta hawezi kwenda hata kanisani, anini, kazini. You understand what I'm talking about. Natumai unaelewa kile ninasema. Many lost their jobs. Wengine walipoteza kazi. Businesses closed down. Ah, biashara zikafungwa. The supply chain for even food was interrupted. Hata ile kusambaa kwa chakula pia ikakuwa ni vigumu. And everyone put on a mask. Na kila mtu akaweka mask. And began to seek the Lord for his mercy. You see, I believe that God is speaking to us. Because this is a pestilence among all the nations. And even those who have tried to prevent it from hurting their people. Have failed. Because the virus spreads very rapidly, and while most of the people survive it, the older people are at risk. And even the younger people who have gotten sick are struggling for months afterwards to get their health back. And right now in my in my city, in my town, COVID is spreading a lot. COVID in and there are many people every day that are getting sick. And every one of us in the USA, we can go down the street to a local pharmacy and get the jab. You understand what the jab is, right? The English must have started that word. But the vaccine is available. And anybody can get it. But unfortunately, we have about half of the people in the USA. Who don't want to get the vaccine. They've been, they've been watching YouTube too much. They are afraid they are going to get the mark of the beast. Do you understand? Yeah. And they are sincere brothers and sisters. I love them. And in our country we have this, I have my rights. 
And so many people just don't want to get it because they want to make their own decision. I can understand that. I have no problem with that reasoning. But it is pretty clear that if you get the vaccine, even though you can still get the virus, you will not be very sick with it in most cases. But right now, I have a, a number of personal friends who have died from COVID and they're now sitting at the feet of Jesus. That's not bad, right? So we have to respect what people think about the vaccine. But for me, in order to travel around the world, you understand, it was not an issue for me. Nobody forced me. I voluntarily took the vaccine. Because you see, I want to do the will of God. And for me, I cannot do the will of God and stay home hiding from the virus. And so we have these difficult decisions to make. But I encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit. And don't listen to uh, myths and stories that people tell. Because whether it's the government or whether it's people on YouTube, there's a lot of bad information out there. Amen. So you, you need discernment. And if you're like me, and you want to do the will of the Father, you will have to make your decision based on that. And so I'm thankful that even up to this moment, We've been able to help many, many people with emergency food. And just last year, we, we sent out about $150,000 U.S. Just for food. In 10 or 11 different nations. And it was simply the generosity of God's people in the USA. Amen. And they trusted me to help you. And so that's what we did. We would have liked to do more. The needs were so great. But we took the opportunity to do what we could do. Because we want to please the Father. And we know that by loving His children, we are in the will of God. Amen? Amen. No question about that. His Word has taught us this. But now we are shifting back from emergency food supplies in, in order to provide an, an opportunity for people to provide for themselves. For many years we've been having a small ministry of microloans. And this, this is how it works. I raise money from generous people in the USA. And we apply it to small loans for people who need to help themselves. 
And then we our trusted partners like Brother John here. Na tunawapatia wa wenzetu ambao ni waaminifu kama mchungaji John. We'll find the people that will cooperate. Wow, na tafuta watu ambao watashirikiana naye. How many know you have to find people who will cooperate with you? Wangapi mnajua kwamba lazima upate watu ambao utashirikiana na wao kwa uaminifu? You can't work with people that won't work with you. Uweze kufanya kazi na watu ambao si waaminifu kwako. And so what we do is we buy some animals for the people. Kwa hivyo tunakile tunachofanya tunanunua wanyama kama ng'ombe ama mifugo ya watu. And right, right now in Kenya, sasa hivi Kenya, we are buying some chickens some geese na geese zibata some ducks na hizo bata hizo hizo and some rabbits na sungura and even goats na hata mbuzi and we have bought pigs too we have hata nguruwe and this is how it works na hivi ndivyo inavyofanya kazi we help a family with some animals. Not a whole lot, just to start, to begin. But they first must agree to pay back what they received in one year. Okay. So if I buy you some chickens and if I spend a, a how much is twenty dollars? Two thousand. Okay, that's good. Two thousand shillings. And you have to agree that within one year, you you will give back to Pastor John that same amount. No more, no less. Sio zaidi ya hiyo ama kidogo ya hiyo. No charges, no interest. Hakuna interest yoyote utakuwa unatakiwa na hiyo. And so you do that. Na kwa hivyo ukifanya hivyo, and when you pay back that 2000 shillings, ukilipa hizo 2000, ukirejesha, that money is used to help another family, an additional family. Hizo pesa zinatumiwa kusaidia sasa yule mwingine. And that person agrees to the same thing. So if I begin with 20 families, and I buy animals for 20 families, at the end of one year, we will help 20 more. And after another year, we will help 20 more. And every year, we will help 20 more families. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. It's so simple. It's from God, I believe. And if everybody cooperates, I give the money for the first animal. Then you pay back your loan. Now you are helping the next family. I'm done. I'm finished. And now you have helped another family. And that family will help another family. And it goes on and on and on and on. Until Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. And the people are having a tremendous testimony. They are able to multiply their animals. And sell them. Sell them to people who want the meat or the eggs. And now they have a source of income that it keeps coming in for them that they didn't have before. How many like the idea? Praise the Lord. This is this is much better than just giving food to people. I'm sure that if, if, if I said to you, here's, here's a bag of food, you would be happy, right? 
But you you eat it and it will be gone. Yeah. But if I if I buy you some chickens, and you begin to raise your own business of chickens, you might become rich and famous in Kenya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what we're doing. And we're using this project to preach the gospel. Because we reach out to people and we help them in this way. And suddenly, they are much more open to hear and believe the word of God. Amen? Amen. And so our goal is to preach the word to find new believers who will become disciples of Jesus who will grow up to also preach the word of God and make disciples and we continue the process you see this is the word of God so these, these projects only help us so let me talk about the water project for a moment I'm focusing our resources in these two areas. The animal projects and also the safe water project. Now we, many of you are probably familiar with the chlorine generator. Uh, once again, this is the this is the chlorine generator bishop right here. <laughs> and he he is the brother that's receiving the equipment. It doesn't look like much. But this device will provide clean water for 300 families. Did you hear what I said? This device will provide clean water. It's supposed to last for 50 years. It's just made out of plastic. And inside there are very expensive metal plates. And when we connect this to a, a, a car battery, the 12 volts run through the, the metal plates. And we pour a liter of salt water through it. And after you pass it through four times, you have a bottle of very strong disinfectant. And it contains three new chemicals. Because the salt water makes three new chemicals when passed through electricity. So we end up with chlorine. Ozone. 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 I don't know how you say it. Peroxide. So we have chlorine, ozone, and peroxide. ozone, And if we put the right amount of that, uh, a few catfuls from the bottle, into a, a 20-liter bucket of your water, maybe five or six here. Just that, that blue water cap. You see the, the bottle of water? The cap on that bottle, we use it. Maybe five or six of those capfuls of the chlorine in a 20 liter bucket. In within one hour, 
kwa lisani mmoja that chemical hiyo dawa will kill all the known pathogens bacteria viruses or uh, parasites itaua vidudu vyote iwe ni ni parasites ama bacteria na zingine zote ambazo ziko kwenye maji and so god has raised up the funding for this equipment kwa hivyo Mungu amefungua mlango wa pesa za kuweza kununua hivi vyombo. And I have a very generous ministry in the USA. Na niko na huduma yenye ya kujitolea sana kule Marekani. That sends me a lot of money every month. Ambao wananitumia hela kila mwezi. And so I buy this equipment. Kwa hivyo nanunua vyombo hivi and I share it with about 10 different nations. Na nashiriki kwa mataifa kama kumi tofauti. And I thank the Lord that we can actually ship these by UPS. Na nashukuru Mungu kwamba tunaweza kutuma hizi kupitia chomba um usafirishaji ambao ni wa urahisi sana. I used to carry them all in my suitcase. Nilikuwa ninazibeba mimi mwenyewe kwenye sanduku langu. But now we can ship them. Lakini tunaweza kuzitumma. And we're able to get them every nation I've sent them to they arrive safely. Na tunaweza kutuma kwa mataifa yote ambayo nimetuma zimefika kwa usalama. And so John is training teams. Kwa hivyo mchungaji John anafunza vikundi tofauti. And you have to make a commitment to do this. Lakini lazima uwe umejitolea kufanya hivi. You have to take care of the equipment. Lazima uichunge chombo hiki. We donate it to you. You don't have to pay for it. Sitakupatia bure hawezi kununua but you have to agree to take care of it. Lakini lazima ukubali kushika vizuri kitunga. And you must have set a goal for yourself. Na lazima uwe na lengo kwako wewe mwenyewe. That for this piece of equipment, kwamba chombo hiki, you will develop 300 families. Utaweza kusaidia jamii ya tatu that you will supply the chlorine to them. Ambao utawapatia ile dawa ya chlorine. And they will need it na watahitaji twice a month mara mbili kwa mwezi because it is only lasts for two weeks kwa sababu ile chlorine ukiitengeneza inafanya kazi kwa wiki majuma mawili and then it begins to lose its effectiveness alafu inaisha nguvu so we provide a liter bottle kwa hivyo tutatoa kama lita moja ya maji ya hiyo dawa to each family kwa kila jamii every two weeks baada ya ya juma mawili and we ask them na tunawaomba to pay a small amount. Waweze kulipa gharama kidogo tu. Well, how much are you charging? 20 how, how much? Shilingi 20 for one Okay. Okay, so that we're doing that so that you can earn some money. Tuwafanye hivyo ili uweze kupata kitu. You see, my purpose is to make you a rich person. Ndio namu ni kukufanya wewe mtajiri. I raise the money ninachangisha pesa i buy the equipment ninanunua hivi vyombo and you go to work wewe unafanya kazi to reach at least 300 families kufikia hizo jamii 300 and every month na kila mwezi then you you will have to have to make uh every two weeks you have to make 300 bottles na kila majuma mawili unafaa unatengeneza chupa kama 300 kufikia hizo jamii and the second two weeks you repeat for those families each of them need another bottle so if you make 600 bottles a month at 50 cents us each you will end up with 300 us dollars which is 30,000 utapata shilingi 30,000 za Kenya mwisho wa mwezi. How many how many can use an extra 30,000 Kenya shillings? Wangapi mnaweza ku Mr. Hands. Oh come on, everybody could use it. But so we're we're empowering the people to make money. Kwa hivyo tunawasaidia watu kutengeneza pesa. But every one of those 300 families will be now saved from all the problems of bad water. Lakini kwa jamii hizo 300 wataweza kuokolewa kutokana na maji 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 mbaya. And I'm telling you, na naomba hivi, it works everywhere. Inatendeka na inafanya kazi kila mahali. In the jungles of the Amazon River, katika katika msitu ule wa Amazon, 
mtu wa Amazon or in Nakuru Kenya ama hapa Kenya Nakuru the chlorine purifies the water chlorine inatengeneza maji kwa safi and the people won't need to go to the doctor for water problems watu hawataenda kwa madaktari kwa sababu ya maji chafu because that gets expensive right inakuwa ni na gharama kubwa sio not with the money but you miss work you miss school Situ kwa hela peke yake lakini hata wendi shule kazi wendi shuleni so you will be much healthier by using this chlorinated water kwa hivyo utakuwa na afya nzuri kwa kutumia maji haya sana and this year mwaka huu we will reach one and a half billion people with this equipment tutafikia watu milioni moja na nusu hallelujah hallelujah because we reach 3000 people with each one of them kwa sababu tuwafikia ile tatu watu na vivyo so i i just said john on 20 na nimetumia tu askof yohana 20 60000 people watu 60 60000 people will now have clean water watu 60000 watapata maji safi and i am distributing more than 500 of these every year na nina peana zaidi ya 500 kila mwaka so that's where the one and a half million comes from na hapo ndipo tutafikia watu elfu moja na nusu. How many like the project? Na kwa napenda sana kwa maji. So we're working while we have time. Kwa hivyo tutafanya kazi tukiwa na nafasi because the clock is ticking. Kwa sababu muda unasonga. Uh, you you are getting old, I am getting old. Unazeeka mimi ninazeeka. Yeah. Have you noticed it? Yeah. Tena umegundua haya. And it's no fun to get old. Na si furaha kuzeeka. But we are being prepared for eternal life. Lakini tutatayarishwa kwa maisha ya milele. So now after I've talked about the projects. Ah, kwa hivyo nimeweza kuzungumzia kuhusu miradi. I want to open up the word of God to you, all right? Ningependa sasa kulifungua neno la Mungu kwako. And we're going to turn to Romans chapter 12. Kwa hivyo tunaenda kufungua Warumi 12. Romans chapter 12. Warumi mlango wa 12. And we're going to begin in the first two verses the soma mistari ile ya kwanza Romans 12:1 and 2 are you there Warumi 12 mstari wa kwanza na wa pili it's a very familiar scripture imeandikwa ambayo tunayafahamu vizuri but we tend to overlook it lakini wakati mwingine tunaidharau and to me this is the key to to being a successful believer in Jesus Christ lakini ile mimi kwangu ni msingi wa kuwa mkristo And this is a man of God in the very first century church. Na hili huyu ni mtumishi wa Mungu katika mwaka ambao tunaishi na karne ya 21. Paul the apostle. Paulo tu. And he has been given powerful revelation of the Holy Spirit. Amepewa ufunuo mkuu sana wa roho wa Mungu. And of course we have all of these revelations written down in the new testament na tuna hofu no wote ambao umetolewa katika agano jipya and this man of god suffered greatly greatly for jesus na huyu mtume wa mungu aliteseka sana kwa ajili ya yesu and he ended up giving up his life as a martyr na hata akaweza kutoa maisha yake so with all authority kwa kwa mamlaka yote and being a, a very good example of a disciple na kuwa na mfano mzuri kama mfuasi we are going to listen to his counsel tunangependa kusikia mahusia yake how many are willing wangapi wako tayari this is the word of god for us hili ni neno la mungu kwetu sisi this is the doctrine for the body of christ huu ndio msingi wa mwili wa kristo and you understand na unaelewa there's only one church ni kanisa moja tu you might have your own little group pengine wewe unatoka kwenye dhehebu tofauti but jesus only has one church lakini yesu ana kanisa moja and you are not the head of it na wewe sio ndio kiongozi wa hilo kanisa you might have bishop as part of your name unaweza kuwa askofu kama cheo cha and you use it like it's your name na unaitumia hata kama jina lako it makes me laugh inanifanya nicheke because being called bishop kwa sababu ukiitwa askofu doesn't make you a man of god haikufanyi kuwa mtu wa mungu amen i know you know that but i just have to say unajua unajua hivyo lakini lazima niseme being called and gifted of the holy spirit 
Kuitwa na kupewa karama na Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu. Makes you a man or a woman of God. Inakufanya mtumishi wa Mungu. So we must abide in Christ. Kwa hivyo lazima tukae ndani ya Kristo. We are only saved by grace and faith. Tumeokolewa kwa imani na neema. Let me repeat that. We are only saved by the grace of God which is the power of God to enable us to obey His word when we have no natural power to do so. Did you hear what I said? We are saved by the grace of God which is the power that only comes from God that enables us to believe and obey His word. So this is the truth, my friend. If you want to do the will of God, you must live only by the grace of God. And you must live by faith. You see, both grace and faith are a gift that come from Him. In our natural human ability, we have no power to obey Him. Every day, as a human being, kama mwanadamu produces failure. Tuna upungufu mwingi when it comes to obeying the word of God. Kwa njia ikija katika hali ya kuweza kutii Mungu. Because it is impossible kwa sababu haiwezekani for you and I wewe pamoja na mimi to obey even one law of God. Uweza kutii sheria moja ya Mungu in our own strength. Kwa nguvu zetu. You must have his power. You won't find it in your denomination. You won't find it in a Bible school somewhere. You can only get it from him. And this is why the church is failing. In every nation. It's the same in Kenya. As it is in the U.S., we have a lot of people that say they believe, but when you look at their life, you see bad fruit. Do you understand? You can say anything with your mouth. But your deeds prove who you are. And so we've been given this challenge. By the Lord Jesus Christ. He said. You will know them by their fruit. How many remember? And this is what we're talking about today. How can I move in my thinking and my behavior to do what pleases God? And I begin by telling you it's only by the mercy of God. Because everyone in this room deserves to go to hell. Ana wewe ni ni candidate wa kwenda kuzini. Do you understand? All of us. Kila mmoja wetu. Every person on this planet. Kila mtu hapa ulimwenguni except Jesus. Pasipo Yesu deserve his judgment. Yeye ana hukumu hii. But the mercy of God has been revealed to us. Sime zimetolewa kwetu through the life Kupitia maisha, the death, kifo, the burial, uh, kuzikwa, the resurrection, na ufufuo, and the ascension na hata kupa, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, yes, Come on, somebody say amen. amen. It's because of the mercy of God. Ni kwa sababu ya uruma za mungu. The perfect one. Ile ambaye ni kamilifu. Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ. Son of God came to do the will of the Father. Did you hear what I said? 
He came only to do his father's will. Alikuja tu kufanya mapenzi ya baba. He came to only say what the father told him to say. Alikuja kusema kila maja baba ke alituma kusema. And to do what the father told him to do. Na kutenda kila macho baba ke alimwambia fine. He had a will of his own because he was a human being. Alikuwa na mapenzi yake yeye mwenyewe kwa sababu alizaliwa kama mwanadamu akawai. Do you understand? Unaelewa? But he chose. Lakini alichagua. By the grace of God. Kwa neema ya Mungu. And by faith. Na kwa imani. Not to do his own will. Kwa kutofanya mapenzi yake mwenyewe. But to live every day. Lakini kuishi kila siku. To please the Father. Kumfurahisha Baba. Now that's why I'm here today. Na hiyo ndio sababu niko hapa leo. Not just for chickens and clean water. Si tu kwa kuku na maji safi. Because you'll die in your sins and you'll go to hell. Kwa sababu utakufa kwenye dhambi zako na uende kuzima. No matter how many chickens you own. Haijalishi uko na kuku ngapi or how much clean water you drink. Ama maji safi unayo yakuna. But we need to be concerned about pleasing our Father in heaven. Lakini tuwe na tamaa ya kumfurahisha baba wetu wa mbinguni so that we will be ready when he comes for us. Ili tuwe tayari anapokuja kwa ajili yetu. Amen. Amen. That's my job. Hiyo ndio kazi yangu. I've come here Nimekuja hapa to pre- prepare you kuatarishin to have the very best day ever. Kuwa na siku nzuri kwa zote. When you stand before Jesus. Utakaposimama mbele ya Yesu. That's what I must do. I must preach the word to you. Without compromise. Without adding anything to it. Without subtracting anything from it. And we know. At the end of the previous chapter, chapter 11 of Romans. The word says. That God. Has allowed all of us to live in rebellion and disobedience, so that He can show mercy to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, all of this is in the plan of the Father. He knows you cannot obey Him. So He sent Jesus. To overcome for you. Through his body and his blood. We remember what he did for us. And if you are a disciple today. You must believe in him. See that's a faith word. And to believe. Is a serious commitment. It's not, oh, I believe that's a chlorine generator. Of course I believe that's a chlorine generator. But I am not depending on it to save me. The faith the Bible is speaking of is a total commitment of devotion to believe and obey his word. Kwa kuamini neno lake. Mhm. Is here what I said? Yes. When you have faith, wakati una imani, faith believes without seeing. Imani inaamini bila dhambi. So faith believes the word of God. Kwa hivyo imani inaamini neno la Mungu. No matter what the circumstances are. Haijalishi hali jinsi ilivyo. You understand? Je unaelewa? And when the world comes in when the devil lies to you you refuse to believe them and you stand on the rock of Jesus Christ because of the mercy of God. Do you see what he's done for us? We should be dead. We should be under the judgment of God. Based on our actions. How many would agree? But instead. 
We have a savior tonight combos who shed his blood and gave his body as a price to buy my salvation. Come on, give him praise today. He's so worthy. And so we have the apostle here. He says, Therefore, I urge you, brethren. By the mercies of God. Do you see it? No, no. Because of the mercy of God. Has provided the way for you to be saved. Now here's what you and I are responsible to do. Are you ready for it? Present your bodies. That means your behavior, your habits, your actions, anything you do as a human being. You must make a commitment to serve the Lord only. That's what it means. To be a, a living and holy sacrifice. He wants each of us. To be a living and holy sacrifice to himself. And how do we do that? We give him our behavior. Now remember. You cannot do this in your human strength. When you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you hear about the life and the death and the burial and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus, and you believe it all. Something miraculous happens. Because you see, when you believe what Jesus says, you must deny your pride. You understand people have a pride. Pride is the original sin of both the devil, the fallen angels, and all human beings. And the only way that you and I can receive grace is to humble ourselves. What happens when you humble yourself? You admit who God is and you admit who you are and you realize that you're a sinner and you deserve his judgment so you present yourself you fall at his feet and like the prodigal son you return to the Lord and you admit your sin and you ask for forgiveness how many understand if you're a Christian today you had to go through that process it didn't happen to you by going to a church meeting. A pastor couldn't do it for you. It may have happened in church. But you had to humble yourself. And when you humble yourself, when you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. That's what the Bible teaches. But when you're full of pride, He fights against you. Please remember that. Our only hope for our, our own life for our family, for our church, for our nation, is if we will humble ourselves. And that's what we're describing 
na hiyo ndio tunaelezea hapa a person who has received the mercy of god mtu ambaye amepokea huruma za mungu and they are humbling themselves before the lord na wanajinyenyekesha mbele za mungu when you do that unapofanya hivyo the power of god begins to work nguvu za mungu zinaanza kufanya kazi you understand what i'm saying je unaelewa you can't do anything wewe ukafanya lolote except humble yourself kuliko kujinyenyekesha except believe the truth Asipo kuweza kuamini ukweli except confess your sin. Asipo kuweza kutubu and he will do the rest. Na atafanya yale mengine. The Holy Spirit, Roho Mtakatifu convicts you. Anakushawishi. He proves to you that you're a sinner. Anakufungua kuweza kuelewa kwamba wewe ni mtanadamu. And this must happen to every person. Na hivi lazima itendeke kwa kila mmoja wetu. That's why the Holy Spirit is among us. Hivyo ndio sababu Roho Mtakatifu yuko katikati yetu. He is here to convict us of our sin. Ako hapa kutushawishi kutokana na dhambi zetu. And he may be speaking to us even now. Na hata anaweza kuwa anatunenea sasa. You might not be feeling very comfortable here today. Inawezekana hauna uhuru sasa leo because the Lord doesn't make you comfortable all the time. Sababu hao hakupi ustarehe. When when he convicts you, anapokushawishi, you actually feel bad. Unasikia vibaya. Do you understand? Inaelewa. You don't dance and sing when you're under conviction. Uwezi ukacheza ukifurahi wakati umeshawishiwa kwamba wewe ni mtanadamu. You dance and sing when you have the joy of the Lord. Unacheza ukifurahi wakati una furaha ya Mungu. But when you're under conviction, lakini ukiwa umeshawishika ndani ya you feel bad. Unasikia vibaya. Do you understand? That's the way it is. Hivyo ndivyo hivyo. And when you confess those sins, wakati unatubu hizo dhambi, the Holy Spirit comes. Roho wa Mungu anakuja. He gives you a new heart and a cup of moyo safi. He gives you a new spirit and a cup of raw empty. He gives you a new thought process. And a cup of mazo mpya. That's prophesied in the Old Testament. Hiyo ilitabiriwa kwenye agano la kale. And it's fulfilled in the New Testament. Na imetimia kwenye agano jipya. That's what we call being born again. Hiyo ndio tunamaanisha kuzaliwa tena. If you were born again, you have gone through this process. Umepitia hatua hizi. Yes. Thank God for it. Shukuru Mungu kwa. When you're an undisciplined child, wakati wewe ni mtoto usio kuwa na nidhamu, your parents have to punish you. Wazazi wako lazima kuwaadhibu. Amen. How many have been punished before? It's not a pleasant thing, is it? And when you're going through punishment, you feel bad. But when all that is over, when you've been restored, then you start to bear good fruit. Amen? Amen. So now you're born again. And if you are a true believer, you will understand from the commandment that you need to be baptized in water. Don't argue with God. Don't tell him you were baptized when you were a baby. He doesn't listen to that. Even Jesus was baptized. And he had no sin. And we need to be baptized because there's a spiritual in, inward cleansing that comes about from the water baptism. And we go under the water and we die. I remember holding some brothers down for a while. I get him in there and I hold him down. He would come up and he would come down. I get him in there and I hold him down. He would come up and he would come down. I get him in there and I hold him down. He would come up and he would come down. I get him in there and I hold him down. He would come up and he would come down. I get him in there and I hold him down. 
Wewe ni mtendadambi mkubwa sana ilibidi ni kuweke pale chini kidogo. But we die to ourselves na tunakufa katika and we raise by the power of God. Kisi, ki, ki, binadamu, na tunainuka katika mwili. That's why the apostles preached repentance. Hapo ndipo watu mitume walihubiri water baptism, ubatizo and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, baptizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. How are you going to live for God without the power of the Holy Spirit? Utaishi vipi ndani ya Mungu bila nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu? If you are a true believer, ikiwa wewe ni mwamini wa ukweli, you believe what the word of God says to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Unaamini kila ambacho Roho wa Mungu anasema kuhusu ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. And and you will seek him. Na utamuomba for the baptism and you will find him and he will fill you up now that's just the beginning because now we're in Romans 12 because of this wondrous grace of God the mercy of God do you know that every, every one of the apostles wrote in their letters Grace and mercy and peace to you. Na chuo mitume wote waliandika katika maandiko yao neema na huruma za Mungu usiwe pamoja nao. It wasn't just some uh, cultural thing. Haikuwa tu ni hali ya kitamaduni. But they knew the people needed mercy and grace and peace. Lakini walijua watu walihitaji neema uh, neema na huruma na imani that, that only comes from the father and the son inatoka kwa baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu because of the mercy of god kwa sababu ya huruma za mungu we must give over our behavior as a living sacrifice lazima tutoe tabia zetu kama dhabihu iliyo hai look what it says there tazama kile inavyosema it says which is your spiritual service of worship ambayo ndio ibada yenu yenye maana you want to understand the biblical definition of true worship je ungependa kujua maelezo kamili ya kuabudu kwa kweli it is believing and obeying the word of god ni kuamini na kutii neno la mungu amen you can stand up here and shout and sing naweza kusimama hapo upige kelele uimbe and it may not even be sincere. Na inawezekana isiwe ni ya ukweli. I hope it is. Na tumaini ni ni ya ukweli because I love praise and worship. Kwa sababu napenda kusifu na kuabudu. But this that we do on the stage is not worship. Lakini kile tunachofanya hapa mbele si kuabudu. Hearing and obeying the word of God. Kusikia na kutii neno la Mungu. You remember what Jesus said to the woman at the well? The Father is searching for those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is what we're describing here. Empowered by the Spirit to obey the truth. And look what it says next in verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. What does that mean? The church should not look like the world. The church should not act like the world. The world stands for the unbelievers. The ungodly people. And the church must not be like the world. Don't pattern your life after the wisdom of the world. And so it should affect our behavior. Na kwa hiyo inaweza kudhuru tabia zetu. What we say, kile tunachosema, what we do, kile tunachofanya, what we think. Na kile tunafikiria. Now what happens to you? Na kile kinachofanyika kwako. If all day long, kwa, kwa siku mzima, you are watching YouTube videos. Ukiwa unatazama kwenye mtandao wako about famous entertainers. Uh, wale ambao wanaigiza 
Do you think that will make you more, more godly or more worldly? What if you spend all day watching football on TV? I know I have to be careful here. <laughs> but you don't pray. You don't obey the word of God. You're not meditating on scripture. You're not serving your brothers and sisters. How can that be the will of God? I'm telling you, there's so much worldliness that has come into the lives of Christians. And it's everywhere. It affects the way people dress. And the words that come out of their mouth are awful many times. Because they think that's very neat or cool to do that as a world, worldly person. But the disciple of Jesus Christ who believes and obeys the word of God who has brought his behavior to submission as a sacrifice we must have a transformation of our thinking. How many understand that? You see, the word repentance, that's what the word repentance really means. It means to change your thinking, to believe God instead of the world, instead of the devil, you believe Jesus. So you think like Jesus. It also means to turn your behavior to obey him. That's what it means to repent. So every time one of the apostles said, Repent! He was telling them to change their thinking and to change their behavior. That's what the Bible teaches. Now, this is the key, the very last part of verse 2. As a believer, we should, every one of us, should be desperate to know what the will of the Father is for my life. The, the one issue that should control everything that we do is this the will of the Father. Yes. But we don't. We live like the world our thinking hasn't been changed. Our behavior is disobedient. And we take the grace of God for granted. There are many preachers today in every nation who preach about the grace of God like it is an excuse for our sin. Come and Just come and pray this prayer. Don't At the front of the church. And you mouth a prayer after the pastor. But nothing changed in your heart. And now the pastor tells you, oh, you're a member of the church. But nothing seems different to you. You've become religious. You go to church. You even give an offer. You participate. But nothing's changed. And the reason is 
Our thinking has never been changed. And our behavior has never changed. And it can only change by the grace of God, by the faith of God. And by your walk in humility. Let me ask you a question. How many want to do the will of the Father? Every Christian should put up their hand. Even, even if you're lying about it, you should put up your hand. <laughs> because this is the right answer. We should want to do the will of God. Now notice, this is going to be the theme of my teaching. Oh, we're going to take a break. Is that okay to take a break? And can I come back a little longer? Or if we're done, that's okay. I'll, I'll do it another time. But the theme of my teaching is we need to find out the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now how can you find out what the, the good will of God is, the acceptable will of God, and the perfect will of God is. Only by believing His word, obeying His word, bringing your behavior by grace to, to commit to obedience. Naweza kuleta tabia zako kwa kuweza kuti get your thinking changed na mawazo yako kuweza kubadilika and then and only then na baadaye can you know what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God weza kujua kilicho chema kinachokubalika na mapenzi ya Mungu yaliyo kamilika my friends i've been a christian for 51 years nimekuwa mkristo kwa miaka 51 I became born again and spirit filled in 1970. And I've been serving Jesus all this time. He has forgiven me of many things I've done wrong. And He keeps providing grace for me. And mercy. Na uruma, and peace. Na amani. As long as I remain humble before him, he continues to work. I've been to over 50 nations. This trip right now is my 190th trip overseas. Now, and I'm telling you everywhere I've been this is the problem we have immature believers a carnal church not spiritual not mature but a carnal church whose behavior proves that they are worldly. And something has to change. This is where we begin. We go all the way back to repentance to humility to grace and faith and we get a new start and the power of God will lead us to know the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. How many believe what I just taught you? Family, I want you to stand up. If you believe, and want to obey, I want you to stand up right now. Come on.
see you. Basically, everyone is standing. And the, the, the ministry needs to happen among God's people here this morning. So I'm going to pray with you. Is that all right? And I want you just to lift up your hands in, in humility and praise. And I want you, would you begin crying out to the Lord now? You see, I can't do this for you. You must do it for yourself. And commit yourself to become that holy and living sacrifice that spiritual worshiper to have mind transformation so that you might know what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you in humility. For you know our hearts and our minds better than we know ourselves. And so right now, Father, through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, we come before you for mercy, and grace and peace in this our time of need. And we say to you, Lord, that we need your forgiveness. And we bring our behavior right now that we might begin being the living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And that we might prove ourselves by obeying you by grace and faith. And we would say no to the world. No to the philosophies of this age. And Father, we're asking that you would transform our thinking. Because today, in this humble meeting, we hunger and thirst to know the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. Holy Spirit, come. Transform our hearts and minds. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.